Now, one of the most important things every single website and every single web application should have is HTTPS. So secure HTTP or encrypted HTTP. On the one hand, it is crucial in order to seem reliable and trustworthy to the user or customer. But on the other hand, it's an actual security mechanism. You don't want a traffic between your service and the user that potentially contains sensitive information to flow around unencrypted. So in this video today, we're going to learn how to easily set up a Let's Encrypt certificate on your server so you have HTTPS TPS, you have the security, you have the trustworthiness, and you don't have to spend a single cent on it. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. But now let us get right into it. Now, some of you guys might not know what I'm talking about. So I'm briefly going to show you the difference here. I have a web server running on this IP address. And it basically just hosts a simple flask application that says hello HTTPS world. As you can see, when I go to HTTPS and then the IP address, it says not secure. This is when I look at the certificate, not uh, what this is meant for. This is meant for floriandedoff.com, which is my name. And it doesn't work on this specific IP address because I'm not using the respective domain. Same if I go to a website called Open Exodus, which is also a domain that I own because I'm going to do something with this domain soon. But right now it's just pointing at this IP address, but there's no certificate for it. So it says again, not secure because this is not the proper certificate. If I go, however, to floriandedoff.com, all three, by the way, pointing to the same server, same IP address, same Flask application, you can see it says connection is secure. If I click on it, certificate is valid. And you can see it says here, let's encrypt and everything's fine. It was issued today and will expire on January 5th. 2026. So this is exactly what we're going to learn how to do today. Particularly here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this work also on this domain. So open exodus.com. So I'm going to show you how we can set this up so that this is also a secure and trustworthy connection. So basically, for this video today, you're going to need two things, you need a web server, preferably a VPS, and you need to have a domain pointing to that VPS. Everything else I will cover here from scratch. But what you need is you need some IP address, some server running there, and you need to have a domain that points at the server. So right now here I have florindedoff.com. I have open exodus.com. If I click here on services in my specific uh, Hetzner configuration here, it's going to look slightly differently on every provider, I can go to DNS administration, I can go to open DNS interface. And here the important thing is the a entry for IPv4 and the AAAA entry for IPv6. These are the four things that you need to change. So just make sure that whatever interface you have here, change these values to point to the IP address of your specific server. In my case, here you can see the IPv4 address, the IPv6 address, that's what you need to enter here, then it can take some time for this to be applied. Once this is done, you have a connection, but it's not yet secure. Also, this tutorial today is specifically for servers where you have command line access. If you just have a web hosting package where you have a domain and some uh, PHP WordPress or something, usually you will find a very simple button or checkbox where you can enable SSL where you can enable Let's Encrypt. This is the more technical way of doing it manually in your web application setup with Docker Compose Nginx and so on. Uh, so we're going to go this route for a simple use case of a web hosting package with WordPress, you usually have just a simple button that you can click. So maybe just to show you what this looks like in a web hosting package, here's neural9.com. So my WordPress blog and the website where I have everything, this is managed with a UI. So I can click here on new certificate, I can renew, I can revoke, I can redirect and everything in a graphical UI. What we're going to learn today is how to do that on a VPS, where you have your complex web application that's running Flask, Django, Fast API, Nginx, a front end and all that. This is a more technical approach. Also, for those of you who care about it, I will briefly one or two minutes cover how all of this works in theory. If you're not interested in that, just skip ahead one or two minutes, you will find some chapters down below. So you can skip this part. But the basic idea is that you have to somehow prove to a certificate authority, in this case, let's encrypt, which is free and does this just so everybody can access HTTPS. And we don't have to rely on some paid uh, certificate authorities. The basic idea is you have a client that uses a certain protocol, it's called ACME, we're not going to go in detail here. But what you need to do is you need to prove to the certificate authority that you have control over a domain. In a very quick nutshell, how this works is that the certificate authority uh, tries to give you a challenge. So they tell you put this file in a certain path on the URL so that when I go to that path, 
I can find a file there so I can see that you have actually control over this particular domain. So it tells you put this file XYZ at path ABC. And if I find it there, this proves that you are actually in control of that domain. And to also prevent abuse or to also prevent this from uh, being attacked too easily, it does that from multiple network perspectives. So it does that with multiple servers, you could say here to make it more difficult for the attacker to somehow do something malicious with this process. Because all of this is running via HTTP because we don't have any HTTPS yet. So this is, of course, vulnerable to attacks. This is how they try to make this more difficult. In the end, what happens is they tell you, okay, we believe you, you have the control over this domain. Now we issue a certificate and now you can use that until this specific date and then you have to basically renew it. That is the in a nutshell explanation. All right, so enough of the talking, let us get started with the action. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna SSH into my server. This of course can differ depending on the setup. Maybe you have to do something like root at and then IP address. Maybe you have to do something like provide a, a key pair for authentication. Maybe you use a password. I'm not going to cover SSH in general. I expect you to know how to connect to your server. In my case, I already have a configuration. So I just have to say dev server here and it connects to root at at IP address that we saw before. Here I'm gonna provide a password and once this is done, I'm locked in. So here I have old, this is the old code that I used to play around with this and then I have a directory tutorial which is empty. I don't have anything in here. And now we're going to just install a basic Let's Encrypt certificate and see how it works. Now for this, we're going to use a software called CertBot. And this is basically a command line tool that makes it very easy for us to install Let's Encrypt certificates. Uh, I'm not going to use the website too much as a guide here, but you can basically set up uh, what kind of, um, or you can choose what kind of setup you have on what kind of system, and then it's going to give you the respective commands. I'm going to show you that in the tutorial here already, but basically you need to install this tool. How you install it depends on the operating system. On the website, they recommend you use Snap. I'm not a fan of Snap, so I'm going to use Apt, but of course it depends on your operating system. In my case here, I'm running Ubuntu. So on Ubuntu, you can just say sudo apt install certbot. So that is the command sudo apt install certbot, and you have it on your system. In my case, this is already installed. So once you have certbot on your system, you can run a very simple command to get a certificate. The command is sudo certbot cert only dash dash stand alone. Now standalone means it's going to run a server on port 80 and it's going to receive the challenge and put it there to prove to the certificate authority, which is Let's Encrypt, that it actually has control over the domain. Why does it have control over the domain? Because this server is the server that is being pointed to by the domain. So when you go to the domain slash something, you're going to this IP address slash something provided this something is running here. And this something that is running here is the standalone server, temporary server of CertBot. So when I execute the command here, it asks me for a domain. I already have floriandedoff.com. So I'm going to say now open exodus.com. Now it requests a certificate. This is what I mean by temporary server. It boots up a server. The CA is going to provide a challenge. It's going to fulfill the challenge. And after a couple of seconds, we're going to see here that this actually succeeded. There you go. It says successfully received certificate. Certificate is saved at slash ETC. Let's encrypt live open exodus.com slash full chain PEM. And then we have the key at priv key or private key dot PEM. And we can see the certificate expires on 2026. Uh, 5th of January. Now how we actually use that depends on the setup that we have. Maybe you just have a single flask file that you're running as a server. In this case, you just have to provide the certificate and key in the application. Maybe you're using a Docker compose setup with nginx and everything, then you have to do it differently. I'm going to show you these two examples. And then you have to figure out how to do this for your specific setup. So Django is going to be slightly differently, fast API is going to be a, a bit different traffic is going to be different than nginx. So depending on your setup, you have to adjust this, I'm going to show you a very basic flask example, and also an example with Docker Compose and engine X. Now for the flask example, I created a virtual environment activated it and just installed flask. Now I'm going to start a file called app.py. And in here, we're going to say from flask import flask, the application itself, I'm going to say app is equal to flask and then underscore underscore name underscore underscore. And then I will have a simple index route. So app dot route and it's going to be the default route and the function here is going to be index and all it's going to do is it's going to return hello https then we're going to define the basic main segment here so if name is equal to main 
and in here we're going to run the application here is now where the magic happens we say run we specify a host a port and then we also have to specify the certificate and key so for the host we're going to use the classic 0000, 000 just so it listens on all addresses for the port we're going to use obviously the https port so 443 and now we have to pass the ssl underscore context which is basically a tuple of two paths and these two paths are one the certificate path so etc let's encrypt live and then open exodus.com slash full chain dot pem then a comma then copy that and replace the full chain with private key. Now some final formatting here and that's basically it. Now I can go ahead and just say Python 3 app PY and this is going to listen now on this address on port 443. If I open up my browser now and go to floriandetoff.com, this is going to point to the same IP. But now I see your connection is not private. I can go to advanced, I can say proceed, it's unsafe, but I see hello HTTPS with not a secure connection. Now what I can do, however, is I can go to open exodus.com and you will see I have hello HTTPS and the connection is secure because the certificate here is for openexodus.com. So there you go, you have HTTPS with Flask. Now let me also show you how to do that using Docker and Nginx. I need to say here that this is not necessarily the optimal setup. You could also have CertBot running in its separate container and have some logic for automatic renewal and so on. I'm going to keep it simple here and just show you how to use the certificates we just created inside of Nginx and Docker. So we're going to start by creating a Docker Compose YAML file and in here we're going to define the services. First of all, we're going to define the Flask service. Now, this is not the Flask application that we just wrote. I deleted it already. We're going to write a new one because we don't need to terminate SSL on the Flask level anymore. We're going to do it before that in Engine X. For those of you who don't know what it means to terminate and you don't know what Engine X is, Basically, we're using Nginx as a reverse proxy, we're getting something in, we're distributing it into our internal structure, so to say, and termination means I'm decrypting, it's no longer encrypted, I'm decrypting the traffic, now it's clear text, and now it can, uh, yeah, basically be passed around inside of the network D encryption has to happen where I don't have control inside my own network, I have control so I can just pass it around as unencrypted data. But that is what it means to terminate. I terminate on an engine X level, which means now it's decrypted before we terminate it on a flask level. So it was encrypted until it got into flask. So basically, what we're doing here is we're just building the app directory, and we're running this gunny corn command. So we're just uh, running the server here on port 8000. That's essentially it. The rest is just some stuff around it, some naming, some port exposing for documentation. And the second service, as I mentioned, is Engine X, our reverse proxy. Here we map the ports 80 and 443, so for HTTP and HTTPS. And essentially we mount to volumes. It's not actually volumes. We're just saying that the config file in Engine X, I also want to have this inside of the container. And also I'm mapping here the Let's Encrypt directory of the host system to be read only inside of the container so that we can access the certificates. That's it for the Docker Compose file. Now let us create a directory called engine x and in here I'm going to create a file called default.conf. Now the first thing that we define here is that every traffic that comes into port 80 and tries to connect to openexodus.com or www.openexodus.com has to be redirected to the respective HTTPS path. And now for the actual HTTPS routing here, what we do is we listen on port 443 with SSL, we provide the certificate, we provide the key, this is possible because we're mapping the directories here, we can read these directories inside of the container, because of the volume that we defined. And the rest is just basic nginx stuff. So if you don't know about nginx at all, you want to learn about it, I have a crash course. But essentially, the only interesting thing here when it comes to SSL is that you provide the SSL here and that you provide the certificate and the key. Finally, we're going to go and write our application, I'm going to create a directory app here in this directory app, I'm going to create a file called app.py. And this is just going to say from flask import flask, then the application is going to be flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore classic stuff as always, we're going to have an index function which just returns hello, we don't even need any run here. And we're going to say this is app router, and then slash actually let us stay consistent and say hello HTTPS here. Now we're going to create a requirements txt file. 
just so we can install Flask without problems. And finally, we're going to write a Docker file, which is going to look like this. Very simple. Again, I'm rushing through this because I assume you already know the basics of working with Docker and Nginx. If you don't know that, I also have a Docker crash course, but this focus today is on Let's Encrypt and the SSL stuff. So that's basically just a very, very simplistic uh, Docker file. Once we have all this, I can go back. I can say Docker compose built. And once this is done, I can say Docker compose up. Actually, sorry, I forgot to add one dependency here to the requirements txt, which is Gunnicorn itself. Otherwise, we cannot use it. And I also made the mistake to call this router instead of route. So it's app route, obviously. But now we can go Docker compose built and Docker compose up. So this is running now. I can open up my browser. I can try again to go to floriandedoff.com. You can see I get to this page, but it tells me not secure. And now I can go to openexodus.com. Hello, HTTPS, and the connection is secure. This is how you can easily install HTTPS or set up HTTPS with Let's Encrypt and CertBot on your server. Actually, I need to mention two more little things before we end this tutorial. One is how can we renew a certificate easily? And the second thing is how can we revoke a certificate? So for example, maybe your key was compromised, someone found your credentials. Now you want to revoke the certificate or you just want to renew it because it expires. How you do that is quite simple. You say for the renewal, cert bot, cert only as we had it before and then dash dash force dash renew. And then you just say dash dash cert dash name and then the domain name. So for example, open exodus.com. This is going to renew it. What it asks you now, here's how to do that. In this case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run an HTTP server locally. Uh, so I'm going to choose one, then we're going to wait for a while and then it's going to give us the renewed certificate. There you go. Successfully received certificate. For the revoking, it works quite similar. You would just say cert bot and then revoke dash dash cert underscore or not underscore dash name and then open exodus.com and this is going to revoke the certificate. It's going to also ask you if you want to delete them so you can no longer use them and you can no longer attempt to use them. If you do that, of course, they're gone. So you can do that. You should do that if you're revoking them. But you need to acknowledge that this is, of course, going to destroy your current workflows. But now deleted all files. Congratulations, you have successfully revoked the certificate that was located at this location. So this is how you can do that as well. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Also, if you are interested in personal tutoring on a one on one basis, or if you're interested in freelancing services, you can go to my website and check out the tutoring and service page. Maybe you find something that you're interested in, you can hit me up and and I will usually respond quite quickly on LinkedIn or via mail. And besides that, of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.